Can we restore someone's vision after an eye transplant? What treatment options are there now that Retsu's lost one leg? And how do we treat a dislocated joint? Hi there guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at various Barky characters' injuries and we'll be looking at how we can possibly fix them with modern medicine. Now, as always, if there are other injuries that you'd like me to break down, make sure to leave those down in the comments. Otherwise, if you're ready for more Barky science, let's begin. You're going to allow me to kill you again? This time you won't be getting up. So, first up, we have Doppa Orochi having his eye destroyed by Yojiro Hanma, creating one of the coolest anime characters with an eye patch. But how can we fix him? Well, interestingly, just in the last few weeks, we've seen the first patient undergo both a face and eye transplant, as it was performed on this veteran. Now, miraculously, although this patient isn't able to see through the eye yet, They've shown with MRI scans that when they shine a light in his new eye, the part of the brain that responds to vision lights up. Hopefully this means at some point that his body might recognise this eye as his own to help restore his vision. No matter what, I get up and fight! Damn it. Just gonna run away like a coward. Next up, we've got Muhammad Ali Jr. taking on Jack Hanma, who completely lacerates through his tongue. And remember that your tongue is an essential structure involved in the pronunciation and formation of words and your voice. But can we fix it? Well, remarkably, yes. The tongue recovers really quickly after sustaining damage. In fact, I've seen cases where people have had tongue cancers that have been removed and they've made a full recovery with their voice intact. So it's not all bad news for Muhammad Ali Jr. Eating can be a way of saying farewell, but it is a damnable fate. The two cannot be separated. Oh, so next, we've got the infamous amputation of Retsu's foot by the cannibalistic nature of Pickle. But will he ever walk again? And what can we do to fix this? Well, there are really two options. And the first one is having a simple prosthetic that will attach to the stump that he'll now have after his foot's been removed. Or alternatively, he could have what's called osteointegration, whereby a steel rod is placed through the bone in the leg, which will be a permanent structure which he can add various different kinds of prosthetics to. However, the disadvantage of this option is with him being a martial artist, he could sustain what we call a periprosthetic fracture, whereby the bone around that steel rod could break, which could ultimately be very difficult to manage. What would you guys pick? Let me know down below. Next up, we go way back to a Bucky movie, where we see Bucky take on Atsushi Shredo and he delivers a precise kick to his shoulder, dislocating it. Now, believe it or not, but this is a fairly common injury that we see in medicine. But how do we fix it? Well, basically, we need to get the ball of the shoulder joint to go back into the socket. But before that, we need to get an x-ray just to make sure that there isn't a fracture that we might be worsening when we try to relocate the shoulder. Once that's all been okayed, with the help of several colleagues and some painkillers on board, we apply some counter-traction to the shoulder, hopefully putting it back into place. To be honest, you can normally feel or hear a clunk, and patients often report rapid pain relief if it's done correctly. What? <laughs> You know, Doyle has to be one of my favourite characters in the first season of Baki. I mean, the guy's been electrocuted, set alight, gets beaten down by Katsumi on multiple occasions, and then is made blind by Yanagi. Also, the fact that he's voiced by the same voice actor as Dio definitely helps. But now that he's made himself deaf by perforating both of his eardrums, 
Does this mean that his sense of hearing will be lost forever? Well, no, not necessarily. You can kind of imagine the eardrums as the beacons that help to pick up sound from your environment before transmitting it through to your brain. And so, if you repair the eardrums with a procedure like a myringoplasty, then you're theoretically repairing the beacon, which should restore your sense of hearing. I wonder what sense Doyle's gonna take out next. I'll poke my eyes into your two fingers. <laughs> But in reality, it turned out that there wasn't even enough time for that. Shall we call this move the cockroach death? So here we're seeing the strength of Chiharu's fingers up against Baki's retinas. To be honest, I didn't realize that this was part of the body that you could actually train. But just looking at Chiharu's fingers with them pointing in all different kinds of directions, this would suggest to me that he sustained several different fractures. The best way to manage this would be first to get an x-ray to see the extent of the damage, but it looks like Chiharu sustained some serious injuries here, needing some major surgery to repair them. He's likely going to need these fingers pinned to keep them in place, and possibly have an external fixator device to keep his hand isolated while this all heals up. In the meantime, I wouldn't recommend that he makes a fist for the next several months. Don't move. <laughs> oh, okay, so this is probably one of the most serious injuries that we see in the whole Baki anime. I mean, he literally gets his face torn off and thrown into the crowd. But I know what you're all wondering, now that it's been torn off, can it be reattached? Well, somehow Yojiro Hanma has taken this face off with surgical precision, even maintaining the lips, facial hair, and nose in all the correct anatomical positions. And regarding whether it can be reattached, your body's far more likely to accept tissues that are already from your body, rather than that of a transplant donor. However, I'd expect there to be quite significant nerve damage, meaning that it would be unlikely for you to be able to fully restore both your motor and sensory control of your face, meaning for this guy, he may well not have his Hollywood smile. Also, you may want to give it a quick clean before you reattach it. I'll try not to throw you so hard that you break. He turned my right wrist into a pretzel. Okay, so this is why you should always be cautious when shaking the hands of a martial artist. As Oliver put it, you may well come away with a hand that looks like a pretzel. However, the way it looks to me is that Shirazawa has dislocated Oliver's wrist. And firstly, just like the shoulder dislocation we looked at earlier, you want to get an x-ray to make sure there were no fractures. And if those x-rays are all okay, you'd need to reduce this dislocation back to the anatomical position. And to keep it there, you may well need to use some K-wires, as well as isolate the wrist for up to 10 weeks with no weight bearing. However, for the world's most muscular man, this doesn't sound like a realistic plan for him. <laughs> Gosh, what a gruesome injury as Katsumi willingly gives up his arm to Pickle. And just like Retsu, I don't think he's going to be getting that limb back. But how might we fix Katsumi here and allow him to continue with his karate journey? Well, really, he's got one of two different options. Option one is a bit experimental in being an arm transplant. That's right, Katsumi would have to find a suitable donor arm which would then need to be transplanted onto his torso. Such a procedure had been given to this veteran who had both of his arms blown off when in active duty. And with painstaking physiotherapy and rehabilitation, he's starting to get better control of these limbs. The alternative would be something like a prosthetic limb, with the newest models being able to pick up even the smallest impulse from the brain and spinal cord, giving you more dexterity in your movements. Who knows, maybe one day Katsumi might be able to overcome his Mac Punch. Which of these two options would you guys choose? Let me know down below. <laughs> He 
died of old age. Now, I don't know where this doctor got his medical degree, but people don't normally die just from old age. There tends to be an underlying cause, such as a coronary event, that being maybe like a heart attack, that's caused your heart to stop. But is there a way of fixing this, especially for someone this age? Well, yes there is. He could be fitted with an implantable defibrillator. That's right, it's an automated defibrillator that's surgically inserted under the skin and it delivers a shock should the heart need it. And the cool thing about these is that they're normally connected up to a heart hospital. So should it actually fire, they tend to give you a call just to make sure you're okay. Some strike! Jack struck underneath his rib cage. Broken ribs aren't his goal. <laughs> oh god, that's pretty gory. As we see Jack put his fist up under his diaphragm, under his ribs, contacting what looks like his heart. And much like if you hit any organ in the body, it would begin to bruise and swell. And in the case of the heart, this could lead to what we call a pericardial effusion, or where fluid collects around the heart, restricting the heart actually beating, which can lead to death. But is there a way for us to fix this? Well, it's going to sound equally gory, but you can actually introduce a needle into that space surrounding the heart to help drain off that fluid, which helps to relieve the constriction around the heart, allowing it to beat. And you could effectively save someone's life in doing this. For anyone that's interested, it's called a pericardiocentesis, but please don't try this at home. <laughs> so, Doyle is definitely the master of the sneak attack with all of his concealed weapons. But I think what we're seeing here is a jaw dislocation where the jaws actually come out of the temporomandibular joint and this can be incredibly painful. But how do you fix it and can we put it back in place? Well, if this is actually a recurring problem, you can actually be trained to relocate it into its normal position, a bit like he's demonstrating here. Or alternatively, you could have a trained professional do this for you, where they massage the joint back into place, and you often hear and feel a clunk as it does so. <laughs> what a fool to give that first shot to Biscuit Oliver. He's definitely a character who's going to capitalise on that freedom as it looks like he turns him into a pretzel. But I don't think this is the first time we've seen this kind of injury as I seem to remember Yojiro Hanma doing something very similar to an opponent in the Maximum Tournament. But what are we looking at in terms of an injury here? Well firstly we're definitely looking at a fractured vertebral column and in line with that he's likely torn through his spinal cord which would effectively leave him paralysed from the waist down. But how might we be able to fix this? Well, to be honest, at the moment, modern medicine hasn't come up with a biological way to repair this kind of injury. However, he may well be a candidate for something like an exoskeleton suit that would allow him at least to get around. And there are some out there at the moment that are being developed to help people who are paralysed in a similar situation like this. However, none of these have combat abilities, so I would suggest that this would be the end of his martial arts journey. Oh, okay, so the man of medical marvel, who has single-handedly kept several different doctors in business, what can we do about that face for you? Well, firstly, I have to say it's not as bad an injury as the guy who had his face torn off by Yojiro Hanma, but it's still pretty serious. You see, we can't just leave those tissues uncovered, otherwise you could develop a really severe facial infection which could spread to the brain and be life-threatening. So I think the only real option is to give him some skin grafting, whereby skin's taken from a healthy part of the body and translocated onto the face. And should he find himself under the hands of a plastic surgeon, he may well come out with quite a good cosmetic result. 
I would just suggest for the time being, maybe not to take any further headshots. Stand back, class. Just watch and learn. What the hell? That's no karate uniform. That's... <laughs> So, I seem to remember in the next scene that Katsumi has burns up and down his whole body, and he also has far less hair than he does in this one. Yet, in the pickle arc, he seems to have miraculously recovered from his burns and has a head full of hair again. So how could he have fixed this? Well, it's either a convincing wig, or he's had a hair system glued to his scalp. Or alternatively, he may well have had a hair transplant where hair is taken from one side of the head and relocated elsewhere. Now, most commonly, it's taken from either the side or the back of the head and relocated to the frontal hairline. But the same can be done elsewhere around the body, for example, if you wanted to have a designer beard or designer facial hair. However, trust me guys, this stuff is mine. I promise. <laughs> Gosh, this never gets easier to watch, as I think Baki's actually torn Sikorsky's scrotum and also ruptured one of his testicles, as we see blood coming from his undercarriage. But is there any way to fix Sikorsky's manhood? Well, if there is, Sikorsky needs to get to a hospital as soon as possible, as if the blood supply to the testicles are compromised, you only have six hours to correct it before the testicles become irreversibly damaged. And once that sets in, the only treatment is to have those testicles cut out, leaving Sikorsky sterile. Uh. <laughs> So next up we've got Baki getting poisoned by Yanagi's poisoned hand. And also he looks like he's lost quite a bit of weight and he generally looks miserable. Even Dr. Kuriha feels like there's no hope. But what can modern medicine offer to help fix things for Baki? Well, it comes down to the poison that's been used against you, and in this case, I suspect, is an animal venom, meaning that the only real treatment is an anti-venom. However, these normally need to be administered as soon as possible to give you a chance for survival. However, in Baki's case, it looks like the only thing we can do is try to make him comfortable. Or, alternatively, we could enter him into a Ray Tai tournament and use some bro science to help cure him. Oh god, what a malicious injury, with Jack biting off Pickle's ear. And I do also love the way that he volleyball kicks it across the room to Pickle. But now that it's been detached, is there any way of fixing this? Well, we could certainly try to surgically reimplant it back onto Pickle's head but I suggest you maybe only have 12 hours to get this done in. If, however, you miss this window of opportunity, you could do what this young girl did, whereby she had a 3D new ear <laughs> produced, which was then reattached to her head surgically, and she looks to be pretty happy with the result. I love my new ear. Also, it's important to mention that if with this bite Jack has left Pickle deaf, he may well need a hearing aid to help restore his hearing, which is probably news that Pickle doesn't want to hear. No pun intended. Okay guys, that's all we have for today's video. I hope that gives you an update on what modern medicine has to offer. Now, if you've enjoyed this video and you want to see more, make sure to check out one of these two videos. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks. <laughs>